Well, hello everyone. A while back a gentleman sent in this Yezu FT901DM. He had bought it at an estate sale and it had some problems. One of the good things that he did was he put a whole list of uh, problems that he was seeing with the radio and you know that helps when uh, checking these things out now he had this thing very very well packed and when it came in I took it out of the uh, the box and he had the whole radio wrapped up in this plastic so I never took the uh, plastic off until today and when I started looking at it to make sure everything was okay I noticed one issue that might have happened in shipping and you can see the switch is missing here ALCIC and power switch is missing so I went back and looked and sure enough inside that plastic wrap I found the broken part of the uh, toggle switch so even though you wrap stuff up like that with bubble wrap and, and plastic doesn't mean it's going to protect it when I ship big radios like this that are this heavy and it's another reason why I don't do so many of them because these are heavy shipping is expensive I'll take something like a piece of uh, this is inch and a half foam board and I'll actually cut it out so that it will fit over the radio or I'll take another piece and and cut it so it'll slide over and then this will go in front of it then cut it down the size that helps protect the front of the radio from any damage but anyway it's already done you know I'm gonna have to see if I can uh, pull this switch out and either fix it or go online and try to find one to uh, replace it with so what I'm going to do now you can see the radio also came with no feet on it so it's kind of uh, rocky sitting on the uh, bench with no feet so I'm going to go ahead and remove the cabinets and we're going to look at the uh, issues that it got and see if we can recreate what he was seeing okay I got the covers off radio plugged into AC um, got the front end propped up on some bench cookies and issue number one the select switch board PB 718 box switch appears to be worn or dirty internally I've attempted to clean it with keg but still no joy it could be a complete board is defective for if one pushes lightly on the VFO or the box switch not engaging it just slightly pushing the frequency goes all up or down a thousandths okay that doesn't sound like a uh, the switchboard itself that sounds like loose grounds or something so we're going to turn the unit on I've got it set to the 20 meter band 14.250 I'll set that to exactly zero. Pushing on the box control. We can see every time I push on it, you can see the last digit change from a zero to a one. I'm not going to push on it. I'm going to push on it. Okay, I think that's just warming up and it was just happened to be in time or something while I was pushing on it. Okay, let's look at the VFO. He said if you push on the VFO. Yeah, 
we're gonna let it warm on up a few more minutes okay it's been on for a bit and I did get it to do what he said and all I was doing was playing with the VFO and it went to 13 megahertz Look, if you see it, there it is, 13650. There we go, 13650. I'll turn it off. Turn it back on, it's back on 14,250. Push it in, 13,655. Well, that does confirm to me that there's some bad connections in this radio. I don't think it's, I'm pretty sure it's not a board failure. It's probably just some uh, bad connections. Um, like some of the later Kenwood models uh yezu was already starting to put in those little white connectors that caused so much problem in the kenwood ts 900 series uh, like the 930s and 40s and uh, this one has similar type of connectors in it as you can see here just on top these are these type of connectors that I'm talking about. Well, it looks like we'll have to uh, pull the faceplate off anyway so we can get to that switch to fix it and we can also start looking at uh, wiring connections in that area. Okay, second issue. <coughs> the power output meter goes to zero if you attempt to transmit and no output is observed or heard. Um, this may be tied to the above issue. It could be that some of the grounding here, if it's you know grounding the uh, the transmit negative line, yeah, it it could be. But that sounds almost like a separate issue that we'll have to uh, tackle once we get this issue fixed. So the first thing to do is that we need to remove all the knobs from the radio. That way we can get this front panel off and uh, see if we can get to the issue. So I'll go ahead and get that done off camera. And as you know when you're um, doing stuff like this, if you're not sure of where the specific knobs go back, Take a picture of it, that way you'll have uh, something to go back on as a reference. And you can also lay out the knobs on the bench, how they came off. Well as you can see I got the whole front of the radio out, the VFO out. Had to remove the display board and one of the uh, boards off the bottom so I could get everything out. Had to. Uh, unscrew the LED board, take out this little potentiometer and I've uh, removed this switch board from its case or bracket, pulled it out and desoldered the switch. Again, I have not been able to find one of these yet on uh, eBay or anything. They show up from time to time so I wanted to look at it to see if I could even repair this. Now, you know, you just can't just go and just glue it back in place because there's so much pressure on it you would eventually break that glue back off and uh, that would leave you with a broken switch again so I'm going to tear this down and see if this can be drill pinned and then epoxied back in and to take the switch apart you just lift up these little four tabs bend them over and you can take the switch apart See, I got the switch taken apart, and unfortunately, I cannot drill it and pin it because this switch mechanism has a shaft right through the center of it. 
and then out the back of it it's got a little boss that this spring pin rides in so there's no way to uh, drill this and pin it to uh, make it stay in place I'm going to try epoxying it and see if that will uh, work if not we're just going to have to find another switch well guys after about two months of searching I finally found a replacement switch for the uh, Yaesu 902DM and uh, this one was on eBay about 12 bucks for it plus shipping so and I've checked it out and it owns out fine so I'll go ahead and get this installed in the uh, radio now that I got the uh, new switch installed and I went ahead and cleaned all the others I can go ahead and clean all these other controls now since they're easy to get to also the circuit board down here for the uh, push button switches I'm gonna go ahead and reflow the solder joints but as we noticed when you pushed on the VFO the frequency would change well it could be that you know it could be some loose connections down here somewhere um, he said that when you pushed on the uh, box control it would change that so that tells me something it's not particularly the VFO but something in the front of this radio is either um, pushing something up against something and shorting it out or there's something loose and the way the radio is now is a good time to get ahead and get in here and do all that okay so I touched up all the solder joints and went ahead and cleaned the um, switches and controls and stuff and I've noticed that the problem is still there with the display so as you can see the display we own 20 meters and the display is reading 13.649 but watch this see that doesn't do it all the time there it goes and I'll show you what I'm doing this wear harness right here that plugs into this unit all I'm doing is just taking and moving it in and the display goes back to where it needs to be so the problem is in this wear harness and this connector and they don't maybe on the bottom of that board I'm not sure yet and what this board is is the crystal unit this is where the crystals or the various frequencies are housed at and these are the adjustments for each band so uh, we need to pull this board back off and have a look at it so if we look here on the bottom of this board we can see this part of the circuit board sticking out with the pins on it and uh, I believe this is where the problem lies at so let's get a good close look at that under the microscope so we'll start down at this end and we'll go through and we'll look at them and you can see those solder joints are not the best this one right here looks suspect and so do this first one right here so that's two you can see what appears to be a crack starting around this one also that one and that one but those last two 
You can see those pins are completely cracked around it. And I think that's what's causing the, uh, the frequency problem. Okay, I got the uh, unit set back in there. I haven't got it bolted in. But we just want to go ahead and check it out real quick. And we can look at all display. See it tunes fine. And now I can wiggle this wire and this unit all I want. And that problem is gone. So I'm going to go ahead and start checking out the uh, second problem he was having with, which was no output on the transmitter. And uh, checking over the buttons here. And this is the button you push to put the radio in the tune mode. Normally you set it over on CW and you press this. And I notice when I press it, it's supposed to come back out a little bit and it does not. So I have to gently grab it and pull it to me. Now it stops and then press it again and I can pull it out. And I noticed that this button is sitting at an angle and so is this uh, processor level button. Well it's working now but there was another one. Okay the receive button you set the RIT it does not come back out transmit button is fine so these two buttons are sticking and again like I say they look like they're sitting at an angle well, I'm hoping I don't have to take this whole face plate back off again I'm hoping I can get to this board in the back and take a couple of screws out we'll just have to look at that and see well if you look here you can see that that board somebody has been in here and messed with it you can see this board right here it is sitting at an angle it's not in that straight 
it's tilted over to that side so uh, it looks like to really solve this problem now I got the switches working but that board is still at an angle so, so someone has been in there and uh, has done something to that so I'll have to take this whole face plate back off again and take this board out and see if I can't straighten that out that's no big problem though uh, if you look at the top of this can here you see it's sitting at an angle also well it just went down so yeah that's some funky things going on here looking at the uh, the VFO dial you see there's a light on this side I don't know if the light's out of placement or there's a light here blowed so I need to go in there and check those bulbs uh, also on the meter there's only one light on this not anything on on the other side and looking in there I can see the lamp on this side but I can't see a lamp over here I'm pretty sure there's a lamp here or maybe it's just fell down or it's blowed or it's just you know at a point where you can't see it but as I was messing with it I went ahead and um, set all the controls checked the bias and so forth and uh, pretty much to say so I'll go ahead and hit the tune button yeah it's about a hundred and twenty five watts out now one thing I like about the 902's when you press the tune button it's going to do what it's going to do and then within about 8 to 10 seconds it clicks out all by itself so it doesn't hold the uh, thing in transmit now when you're using the marks button and you go here and you click it up it stays in transmit until you take it out but when you're using the tune button it has a built in timer and that really uh, makes it nice so you don't damage the final tubes now the guy that owns this he had another set of tubes for this because he knew there was an output problem um, I'm not seeing an output problem now so I guess I was probably wrong in my assumption saying it was two different problems but if you're not getting oscillator from, you know the crystal oscillator is not working and sending the signals out you're not going to have transmit and it was intermittent in this radio so that's mostly what was going on causing uh, no transmit alright guys well, as you can see quick little uh, troubleshooting video and that seems to have solved the two uh, main problems he has now he is saying that the VFO is all frequency so I'll have to check that out too right, so uh, the last issue that the uh, owner said that it was off frequency well yeah it was definitely off frequency we on 14.200 we'll come up here and look at the frequency counter and then we'll go to transmit we on AM and 14.200 so that seems now to be pretty much spot on frequency now we haven't checked uh, upper side band or lower side band but uh, we'll do that when I uh, do a uh, tune up on the radio well there you go guys a uh, quick little troubleshoot and repair of a uh, Yaesu FT902DM as you can see it wasn't very hard to find out what the issues was now I'm gonna go ahead and call this video an end and uh, I am gonna have to go back in here and uh, pull this face plate out check out these two lamps see why they're not working and uh, get those fixed I'm gonna have to realign this board over here and get it sitting in there the way it's supposed to be because looks like somebody's been in here before 
playing around, I noticed that some of the modules are missing screws. So, uh, you know, I, I don't like it to go out like that. I have to replace those screws, get everything secured back in. And in the meantime, I'll pull out all these units over here and clean all the pins, get them back in. Um, this unit's over here, and there's, you know, more connectors here to be clean. Take the tubes out, check them. They seem to be fine, but I'll go ahead and check them since he did send in another set and put the best of them back in. Um, maybe I'll do a second video on it. Um, the heat is working in the shop today. May have found out what the problem was yesterday. I had someone else over here working on it, and uh, he found a couple of things. So, I mean, today it's working. So, <laughs> maybe I can get back out here in the shop and get back to work now. We'll just have to uh, see how it goes. But uh, the temperature has been just about unbearable around here. It's been in the uh, the 30s, and it's rained for the past three days, and it's supposed to rain on up, I think, till Tuesday. Uh, a lot of wet stuff, but yeah, maybe uh, maybe I'll do a, a second video on it. Uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know if you want to see a part two on this. But like I say, the radio is now working. And uh, don't forget, you know, click on the uh, show more tab. Several links over there. Uh, if you want to support me on Patreon, the links there. Uh, link to my website and links to my second channel if you haven't uh, been over there yet it's going to be all about machining still only two videos up uh, got some more in the queue to be uh, getting in there and getting that channel up and going I think I've got 77 followers over there or so and uh, I'd really like to get that on up and get some more stuff coming anyway guys uh, into the next video We'll see you then. Bye now.